Service Procedures for the SAF P89 Plus Integral Disc Brake with Parallel Spindle Axle. Note, before beginning any axle or brake service procedures, park the vehicle on a level surface. Block the wheels to prevent the vehicle from moving. You should also support the vehicle and axles with safety stands. Do not work under a vehicle supported only by jacks. Jacks can slip or fall over, resulting in serious personal injury and damage to components. After securing the vehicle and supporting the axles being serviced, release the trailer brakes and cage the spring brakes according to the spring brake manufacturer's instructions. Next, remove the tire and wheel assembly to access the hub and rotor. making sure to use a supporting device such as a wheel dolly. Remove the ABS sensor from the sensor holder by pulling it straight out from the holder. If you are replacing the ABS sensor, discard the old sensor after removal. If the sensor retaining spring clip needs replacement, you may also remove it from the sensor holder and discard. Now detach the brake chamber from the brake caliper by loosening and removing the two mounting nuts. Remove the brake caliper from the brake spider by using a size 24mm socket to loosen. Discard all four brake caliper bolts upon removal. With a half inch socket, Remove the six hub cap bolts and the hub cap itself. The SAF P89 Plus with integral disc brakes features a singular pro torque nut secured with a keeper arm as shown. If your configuration differs from this, then you may have the standard SAF P89 rotor. Please refer to the standard SAF P89 disc brake service procedure video. Using a screwdriver, carefully pry the orange keeper arm from the undercut groove on each side of the Pro Torque wheel nut until the keeper arm is released. Next, remove the Pro Torque nut from the spindle using a wrench with a standard 4 and 13 16 inch P spindle wheel nut socket. Make sure to rotate the nut in a counterclockwise direction to remove it. Now grasp the head unit with both hands and pull the head unit off the axle spindle. Remove the bearing spindle seal from the spindle and discard. Following are the SAF integral rotor replacement procedures. After having removed the ABS sensor and head unit from the spindle, you can now replace the rotor. To remove the rotor from the head unit, Use a size 15 mm socket to loosen and discard all 10 connection bolts and washers. Clean the rotor contact surfaces on the head unit. Using compressed air, clean the tapped holes in the hub. Check to make sure the threads are undamaged. Before attaching the new rotor, Inspect the wheel bolts on the hub and replace any damaged bolts. Only replace bolts that are damaged or in need of replacement. Remove the wheel bolts by pressing them out of the head unit and discard them. For the SAF integral rotor hub, ensure correct alignment of the bolts during installation. Position the flat side of each wheel bolt head so that it is facing the center of the hub. Install new wheel bolts by pressing them into the head unit. Now attach the new SAF integral rotor to the hub using 10 new SAF specific integral bolts and washers. Using a torque wrench, pre-torque the bolts to 40 foot-pounds. For final torque, tighten the bolts to 140 foot-pounds using a crisscross pattern. Important: When attaching a new rotor to the head unit, Use only new SAF specified connection bolts. Bolts must be clean and free from oil and grease. Caution: 
When installing new washers, ensure that there is clearance provided between the connection bolts and the ABS sensor block. Failure to provide clearance can cause damage to the connection bolts, the ABS sensor block, and even the ABS sensor. Note, to ensure ample clearance, you may need to modify the ABS sensor block. Refer to SAF Holland Manual XL-SA20031SB-EN-US. Before installing the bearing spindle seal on the axle spindle, inspect the spindle surface for nicks, scratches, burrs, or marks. If needed, use crocus cloth or emery cloth to repair any damaged areas. Thoroughly clean the spindle and spindle threads of rust, dirt, grease, or any other contaminants that could damage the hub seal and cause it to leak and to avoid introduction of contaminants into the hub cavity. Coat a new spindle seal with SAF Holland fitting paste and slide it onto the spindle shoulder. Make sure the tapered side of the seal slides onto the spindle first and the flat side of the seal faces towards the head unit. Before installing the head unit, coat the spindle with SAF Holland fitting paste, making sure not to coat the spindle threads. Again using SAF Holland fitting paste, re-coat the bearing journal inside of the head unit before installation. Gently push the head unit onto the spindle to the proper position. Now we will install the Pro Torque Axle Nut. Install the Pro Torque Axle Nut finger tight against the hub. Using a standard 4 and 13 16 inch P spindle wheel nut socket, torque the Pro Torque Axle Nut to 500 foot pounds while rotating the hub. Do not back off the axle nut. Caution, failure to properly tighten the nut could result in bearing damage, which, if not avoided, could result in bearing failure. Install the keeper arm with the orange side facing out by inserting the keeper tab into the undercut groove of the nut and engage the keyway tang in the axle keyway. Engage the mating teeth of the keeper with the teeth of the wheel nut. Compress and insert the keeper arms, one at a time, into the undercut groove. If the keeper teeth do not line up with the teeth in the nut, tighten the nut slightly until they engage. Do not loosen the nut to align the teeth. Make sure that the keeper tab and keeper arms are fully seated into the undercut groove. Inspect the keyway tang to ensure it does not contact the bottom of the keyway. If contact exists, immediately notify an SAF Holland representative. Warning: Failure to ensure that the keeper is properly installed could cause wheel separation, which, if not avoided, could result in death or serious injury. Next, install the hubcap assembly, making sure the hubcap gasket is in place. Important: When installing the hubcap, Make sure the hubcap gasket is not bent or damaged. When installing the hubcap bolts, do not over-torque. This can crush the hubcap gasket. Install the six bolts to secure the hubcap assembly. Torque the bolts to 12 to 16 foot-pounds. To reinstall the caliper onto the brake spider, use four new SAF-specific brake caliper bolts. Note, the caliper is connected to the disc brake spider using four SAF specific bolts, three standard bolts and one shoulder bolt. The shoulder bolt is located at the top mounting hole whether the caliper is installed forward or rearward of the axle. Important: Make sure that the brake caliper is mounted on the correct side of the axle. The correct position can be identified by the lengths of the guide pins on the caliper unit. The longer guide pins should be positioned on the bottom of the caliper unit when installed rear of the axle and on top when forward of the axle. Pre-torque the bolts to 88 foot-pounds from inner bolts to outer bolts using a size 24 millimeter socket. 
Verify the pre-torque of the bolts a second time and, if necessary, re-tighten all bolts to 88 foot-pounds. Final torque from inner bolts to outer bolts should be to 331 plus or minus 22 foot-pounds. Next, reinstall the SAF brake chamber. Install the brake chamber nuts until the brake chamber is in full contact with the mounting bracket. Pre-torque both nuts to 60 to 75 foot-pounds. Then, torque both nuts to 130 to 155 foot-pounds. Next, install the ABS sensor if your vehicle is equipped with them. Note, when replacing the ABS sensor, do not mix sensors from different manufacturers. If the sensor retaining clip was previously removed and discarded, first install a new spring clip onto the sensor holder. Now install a new ABS sensor by pushing it directly into the sensor holder and spring clip until it contacts the ABS toner ring in the hub assembly. Uncage the spring brake according to the spring brake manufacturer's instructions. Before reinstalling the wheel, verify that the brake system is functioning properly. Warning: Failure to verify brake system function after rotor replacement could result in brake malfunction which, if not avoided, could result in death or serious injury. To inspect the brake pads, they must be removed. Start by removing the spring clip cotter pin, washer, and pad retainer pin. This will release the pad retainer. It is recommended that these items be discarded and replaced. If necessary, remove the cable guide plate and wear contacts. Locate the adjuster cap on the caliper. Use the tab on the adjuster cap for careful and proper removal. Caution: Do not use auxiliary equipment to remove the adjuster cap. Damage to the adjuster seal could occur. Using a 10 mm 6-point box wrench, turn the adjuster adapter counterclockwise. Listening for a clicking sound as the adjuster backs off and increases the running clearance. Note: Do not use an open-ended wrench to turn the adjuster adapter as it may cause damage to the adapter. Now that the adjuster has been backed off, the brake pads can be easily removed for inspection. Important: When replacing a worn brake pad, all pads on the axle must be replaced. Only use brake pads that have been approved by the vehicle, axle, and brake manufacturer. Next, install the brake pads in their proper position. The inner brake pad has two circles with X's as shown, while the outer brake pad has a relatively smooth backing to it. Make sure that the pads are in the correct position and the friction material is facing the rotor when installed. Insert the pad retainer into the brake caliper groove. Press down on the retainer to install the pad retainer pin. Fit the washer and spring clip cotter pin onto the pin. Now, check the function of the brake adjuster to verify proper operation. Fit the box wrench onto the adjustment adapter in a position where it can rotate freely in a clockwise direction during the next steps. Actuate the brake 5 to 10 times. If the adjuster is functioning properly, the box wrench will rotate cyclically clockwise with each actuation of the brake. The more the brake is actuated, the less the tool will move. Note: If the box wrench does not rotate at all, rotates only on the first actuation, or with every actuation rotates backwards and forwards, the adjuster is faulty and the brake caliper needs to be replaced. With the adjuster functioning properly, the brakes can now be adjusted. Using the 10 mm 6-point box wrench, tighten the adjuster adapter until resistance is felt while rotating the hub. Then, rotate the adjuster adapter three clicks counterclockwise, increasing the clearance. After the brake adjustment procedure, measure the clearance between the pad backs and the pressure fitting. This must be measured with two gauges at the same time over the entire surface of the pad and the pressure fittings. Use 220 mm long feeler gauges for this measurement. The clearance measurement at both pressure fittings must be between 0.6 mm and 1.2 mm. Warning: 
If the clearance is too large, braking efficiency may be impaired. If the clearance is too small, the brake may overheat and cause further damage. Note, if the clearance difference between the two pressure fittings and pad back is greater than 0.25 mm, the clearance of the caliper guide must be checked for wear. If the clearance of both pressure fittings is greater than 1.2 mm, retest the adjuster function and perform another brake adjustment. If after the adjustment, the clearance measurement is less than 0.6 mm, refer to SAF Holland XL SA40001RM Compressed Air Disc Brake Repair Instruction Manual for troubleshooting options. Before replacing the adjuster cap, apply grease to the seal of the cap. Install the cap in position so the tab is directed away from the brake chamber. In the event of a flanged brake chamber, the cap will still be accessible. If necessary, reinstall the cable guide plate and wear contacts. The SAF P89 Plus Integral Disc Brake with Parallel Spindle Axle Service Procedure is now complete.